Welcome back. April is Stress Awareness Month. Seems fitting. Stress is all around us from family to the commute and work. It is hard to get a handle on all of it. And all the little things in life can pile up and become one big thing, stress and anxiety. But how you manage it is an essential component to a healthy lifestyle. For tips on how to handle it, we once again have Dr. Ifrat Lamandre, also known as Dr. E, the NP with a PhD. Thank you so much for joining us again, Dr. E, we are desperate. Um, <laughs> you mean uh, our viewers, of well, course. I mean our viewers, and the, yes, that's right. But you know, the the first tip you have is to stay active, and I'm wondering if you can just explain for us why physical activity in times of stress is so important for us. It's a great question. Physical activity, it's a natural stress buster, and by the way, it does not have to be intense, and it does not have to be long. If you just do 15 to 30 minutes of a walk, what it does is it releases the endorphins, the feel-good hormones, which really calms us down and helps us with our stress. Next one, mindful practices. You say this is not just about meditation which many of us maybe are picturing when we think of that. What is it? Sure, and meditation is great if you can do it, right? But not everyone can. So mindfulness just means being aware. When you're eating, take a look at your plate, take a moment. If you're in conversation, be present. These little moments of awareness, they're actually mini vacations for our brain. And over time, that reduces our stress. Okay, so the big one that I've been waiting to ask you about once again, because I know the last time you were here, we talked about it, we were doing daylight saving time, right? Oh, and yes. that was very difficult. Um, you said sleep habits are so critical. Can you talk about, especially in stressful times, why sleep matters so much? Absolutely. So you never want to underestimate the power of a good night's sleep. What it does is it resets those stress hormones, your adrenaline and your, and your cortisol levels. It resets it and gets you resilient and ready for the next day. For the audience out there, um, for a friend, what happens when you don't get sleep? <laughs> We're both on, we both got 10 hours last night, so yeah. this, oh, yeah. again, no, we're... Just, oh, 10 hours is yeah, great. It's great. When you don't get sleep, your resiliency goes down and the stress goes up. So you want to try to get those seven Chemically, to nine hours. Chemically, though, it is really bad for us, right? When we don't have that ability to sort of be physically resilient and mentally everything kind of follows, right? Yeah, stress is actually a chemical response. So you start releasing those chemicals and over time that can have health issues, absolutely. One of the things that I'm realizing is a kind of connection to all the dots here is to avoid being on your phone constantly. And, and, and it gets in the way of exercise, it can, but it definitely gets in the way of mindfulness. It gets in the way of uh, sleep patterns. We've talked about that, looking at your phone too much before you go to bed. Um, but you talk about also connecting socially, having interaction with friends and coworkers, working in offices as opposed to at home. What is it about that that's so important to uh, decreasing your level of stress? Sure, and collect, con as you said, connecting socially is not the same as being on social no, media. No, very it's different. Right? It's very different. Opposite, yeah. Yes. So connecting with friends, loved ones, or even a support group, again, releases those endorphins, those feel-good hormones, which combat the stress hormones. In the final 30 seconds here, can I just ask you, Dr. E, what do you do to stay non-stressed in these moments, like very busy times, you know, here in April. So something you can do immediately is just taking a deep breath. There's a lot of science behind it. It's not just a saying, and it releases chemicals that help you manage the stress. And, and rituals, I know we talked about that with sleep and hygiene and making sure you're sort of entering into that sort of restful mindset, right? Absolutely. As sleep, as we said earlier, can help you with your resiliency and get you through the next day. I've right. been taking uh, pre-bedtime showers on occasion ever since we last spoke because it's a good strategy, I guess, and it, my body feels very weird about it because it's totally it's backwards from right. what I used to do, but I'm trying to learn. Yeah, I'm yeah. To get better. Yeah, and I'm having stress. the tea, the sleepy time tea. Oh so my goodness, we'll this see. is great. Yeah, yeah. See, we're, we're poster children for everything you preach. We listen, doctor. We'll, we we'll, listen. We'll check in next time and see if you manage your stress. All right. Let's Sounds hope good. The bags under my eyes uh, are telling, telling signs. <laughs> doctor E, thank you so much for joining us. Yes, a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you can find uh, Dr. E, the NP with a PhD on TikTok <laughs> under her username, uh, The New Method. That's uh, with a K. We will be right back. Stay with us.